is Air Commodore KC Kurovilla and I'm from the 97th pilots course. I was commissioned into the fighter stream in 1967. What I would really want to bring out before I continue is, I would like you to understand that I found through my youth and subsequently that change brought opportunities. So change brings opportunities and when change brings opportunities, you must be quick to see it and seize it. And that's exactly what I did. So coming to the Sukhoi squadron, which was triple two squadron, I was a baby of the squadron. Well nurtured, well and put through all the paces very well. I had excellent gunnery and air combat averages and uh, results. And then as every fighter pilot would dream of, the war broke out. So I won't go into all the details. We have the CDS and other people here who, will, who are you know, amply uh, qualified to give you all the background and I'm sure all of you are very well read in this aspect. Anyway, so the war broke out on the third night and we were in Halwara and of course the Indian Air Force was not going to sit quiet. All hell broke loose. We were all locked up in the base ops and our mission started. So I would like to tell you just two missions that I did. One was the strike on Dera Baba Nanak bridge uh, and uh, we struck the bridge but we didn't have weapons that were say like the S-24. I don't think the S-24 was available at that point of time. So we used I think it was S-80 rockets and the bridge was struck, it was damaged and while returning from there we had got a call from the FAC and the FAC asked my leader if he could do an examination of the uh, of a particular area. So we turned right back into, uh, into uh, towards the border and when we overflew that area just across the border there, were a, there was a lot of equipment, men and material, of course all under camouflage but very evident that something was on the move. And there was an HMG uh, which I didn't know much, uh, you know, you can't make out anything from the air but whatever the FAC said, I picked up that and I, I, I did three attacks over that place. One was a low pass and two attacks and in the second attack I got hit but the gun was silenced and here I will just digress a little bit. I think it was a Marshal Bojwani in his school meet met a friend of his schoolmate called Colonel Chan. Colonel Chan was, uh, Chan was the brigade major of the 83rd uh, infantry brigade and he saw all the attacks and he was in fact talking on the RT telling the FAC, Kone, the layer pilot, some words to that effect. And, you know, and to cut that story short, after 49 years, he found me and he wrote to me and spoke with me. And he said, I saw all your attacks and I was wondering who could it be who did such, uh, such brave attacks and silence that HMG, which was actually halting our progress. And he said, I had recommended to my brigade commander that you should be put up for some sort of award and he should take that up. So this little story will tell you that you know if you are a committed fighter pilot and you do your job it doesn't matter who's watching and how things take place as long as you've done your duty to the service and to your country and to your squadron to your unit and to your own satisfaction and to your conscience that is good enough and that's what we are all trained for. So I will stop here at this one and go to the other mission which was a strike on the tank train and the reason why I uh, mentioned this mission which was an earlier mission is because that tank train was put placed over a station called Chistin Mandi and intelligence reached us and we were given this task. It was a high low high low mission from where, from Halwara where you climbed up to six kilometers, descended, I think it was near Bhavalpur where we uh, turned in due west 
and 60 kilometers at low level after the border and we hit just in Mandi. And uh, I rolled in and I hit the tank train, the engine and the first pallet which contained a tank. So those films are there with the squadron and they were released to the press subsequently. This was the tank train also which was feeding that same strategic reserve as we later discovered which were moving northeastwards towards uh, Amritsa area and perhaps beyond. So that tank train got stopped there and it helped our cause, war cause or we should I say lessen the burden of all that equipment being thrown at us in the war perhaps in the Amritsar section, sector where it was ostensibly heading. So coming back to the mission after Dera Baba Nanak, after the second attack, my aircraft got hit, it caught fire and I ejected at low level at a very high speed and barely about 100 feet and uh, I ejected cross controls and when my parachute deployed, there was already a tree above my sight line and I hit the ground almost simultaneously. As a result of which I was quite winded. I had a, I had a fracture of the, of the right ankle which was not evident really. It had just turned blue and by the time, uh, by the time of, uh, shall I say, the next morning uh, when I reached Rawalpindi, it had already turned blue and I, whatever I could do, I would, it sort of immobilized it because there was no medical attention for almost three months. So the capture per se was, was tough because I, it was a heated battle. When I went down, the CO sent all, the whole squadron came into that area because I think some sort of strategic reserve was, was detected on the move. And there was plenty of targets of opportunity and interdiction was on full scale with the FAC controlling along with the army. Life now is for me comprises of looking after the underprivileged, mostly poor families and that's what I'm doing right now. And uh, thank you very much for this opportunity.